Hi everyone, Jake here. Welcome to the video where today we're going to be taking our Wolfsburg series that's recently finished, going five years into the future and seeing where our players, where the club has gone to. I think it's going to be a fun thing to quickly follow up on and we'll also do a bit of a channel update afterwards at the end of the video as well. So stick around for that part. Shouldn't be too long. I just kind of want to have a look around, see what's gone on in the world of Wolfsburg since we've left. So let's run the intro and get right into it. Hi everybody, here we are, 2030. A big thank you for all the support on the Wolfsburg series and on that last episode ended on such a good note and hopefully things will be going well here as well. To be completely transparent with you, I have seen none of this. I saved the file, I resigned and then I simulated five years. I saw this screen when it had finished in 2030. I hit the save file and here we are. Um, I haven't checked anything out. I don't know where they're going to be. It'll be quite interesting to see how the Bundesliga is getting on if Wolfsburg are still a big club, if any of our players are still around, what happened to all of our young stars, have any of them made it big? It's going to be pretty fun to look into. If you do enjoy this video, smash the like button, comment down below what you were most surprised about and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, getting very close to 7,000 subscribers. It's going to be so good when we eventually reach that milestone. 10k is coming up, it's on the horizon, we're going to get there soon. So with that being said, let's go find Wolfsburg and see how they're getting on. I think the easiest way to get to it will be to look here at the Bundesliga top goal scorer award that will take us to Dortmund that will take us to the Bundesliga and then we can see Wolfsburg who are apparently title holders but I didn't see too much else there and wow there we go the manager currently of Wolfsburg is Eric Ten Hag former Ajax manager I don't know how long he's been here I don't know how well he's done but if he's overtaken me on the favoured personnel section I'm going to be furious the captain of the club is Nico. Frank Kessie is still here as the vice captain. Alfonso Sepulveda, who I had written off, is apparently the key player. And their hot prospect is Arnie Beckenmeyer, obviously a new new gen. Um, but it seems everything's going well. We're still predicted to come first. Our value is £2 billion. We've still got a worldwide reputation. The facilities are still good, but not as good as they were when I was there. So clearly Ten Hag doesn't care about all that stuff too much. But um, overall, as a quick look, things look like they're going well. Um, I think the best thing to start with will be the Bundesliga over the last few years. If we go to the Bundesliga table, we've only just won it this year, just topping Bayern Munich by one point. But as we can see, the past winners over the last few years since we left the club have all been us other than the year we left. Bayern Munich won it. So it obviously wasn't the best first year for whoever took over. They obviously didn't think our squad was good enough, but it seems that. The work that we've done has paid off because the club is still going very strong. Let's see if they've won any other competitions before we look at the managers and the players. Um, Competition-wise, we have got the Bundesliga. The Champions League we won is the only Champions League they've won. They haven't even been runners-up in previous years. And um, We got a Pokal win very recently in the current season in 2030. So they have done the double. They won the Super Cup a couple of times. Our Youth Academy teams have been very good by the looks of it since we've left still. And they've even won the away for Youth League. So things are obviously going well in the whole setup that we started with the youth facilities, with the academy. So I think we've set up a really good club here. And it's nice to see for the first time in one of these simulations, the club hasn't completely capitulated, which has happened in a lot of them. But let's have a look at the players. Actually, favoured personnel first and foremost. We are on the favoured personnel list. By the looks of it, we're at the bottom and ahead of us, we've got Eric Ten Hag, we've got Frank Kessy, we've got Lacroix. Um, yeah, that's kind of annoying after everything we did, but that's football manager for you. Ten Hag must have been here a while. Um, icons, we've got some names that we recognise. And legends, Bellingham and Nico both made it. So that's nice to see. But let's check out, first of all, what managers the club's had since we've left. Um, Nelson Vivas. Okay, so he was the caretaker manager only on for 45 days after we left before they replaced him with Eric Ten Hag. He was my replacement. He has done a great job over the time he's been here. It looks like he's had a very successful time as Wolfsburg manager. He's been here over a year longer than we were. It looks like he's won more games. But one thing I've just noticed, how good is this for our record? In the whole time we were there, three years and basically four years, if we want to call it that, we only lost 19 games. That is very, very impressive over the course of all those seasons. Um, he's apparently got more league wins than me now, more cup wins. But he hasn't won the Champions League, so I'm going to hold that to myself. He hasn't won the Champions League. That is all us. Um, but let's have a look at the squad, see how that's shaping up since we've left. Are we going to recognise any of the names if we go by age order? We've got Kessie still here. Baku is still at the club. Has he been as good as he was when we had him? Uh, we left in 2025. And yeah, he's kind of kept it up. He's still been... A very good player for the club. Shawmeni is at the club. Lacroix still here. Who else have we got that we recognise? Nico, Gavardiol, 
Um, Wurtz is still here at the club. It looks like his career hasn't gone too well since that Champions League winning goal. That might have been the pinnacle for him. Since then, the managers haven't favoured him too much. He hasn't done too well overall. Maybe a change in system, whatever it might have been, has meant that he hasn't been used as often. Um, like we said, Alfonso Sepulveda is still here. Callum Hallard is still here. Whilst we can't see every single one of Sepulveda's attributes, it looks like he is a very good player now and has finally found his feet because he's actually hitting decent match ratings, which he did not have really when he was with us. It looks like he's basically one of the best players in the league now. So that's good to see. But um, it's missing a lot of familiar names, right? I feel like there's a lot of players missing that we knew of. And obviously that is going to be the case. But let's go back to the first season after we left and see who was signed. So that was our transfer window. This is the first one without us as the manager. Let's go by fees. And we can see they sold Kozlowski to Bayern Munich for £33.5 million, at which point Bayern Munich won the league and was the instrumental in that. Um, I suppose he was a big part of it. So that was a silly move on Wolfsburg's end to get rid of him. I suggested Daviv might leave the club when we left, and he has. He went to Manchester City for £31 million. Castiles went to Villarreal. Astra Ranks moved on. Mamradashvili moved on. It looks like they're the only major sales of note in that first year. And we replaced them with Kang In Lee, who looks like was brought in to be a wide player because we, of course, did get rid of every wide player that the club had. They signed Danny Martin, a goalkeeper from who was at Villarreal. So they decided we needed a new goalkeeper. Obviously, I was happy with the goalkeepers we had, but they clearly were not. Kamil Piatikovsky was signed, a centre-back to replace Daviv. And they also signed another centre-back in Goncalo Ignacio. So they sold one centre-back, signed two more, and we already had like four quality centre-backs at the club. I suppose they did loan Garcim and Uti out. Where's he at now? He's playing for Tenerife, so clearly he wasn't as good as we thought he was. But um, he was around for a long time with us. So I see why they have improved the back line. Okay, fair enough. The season after, they didn't spend too much money, bringing in Satriano from Roma as a striker option and Barco as a central attacking midfield option or to play on the wing. Does that mean we sold one of the big guys up front? Wow, this is a very big exodus of players. We sold Benjamin Sesko for £142 million to PSG and Jude Bellingham was sold for £116 million. A profit on what we signed him for, but the fact that he's reached legend status at the club in that short amount of time is something suspicious about that. I mean, we were there longer than Jude Bellingham was, but it's good to see we obviously had quality. Bellingham going to one of the best teams in England and Sesco looks like he's a star man now for PSG. I, I mean, I say star man. What a waste of money from Paris Saint-Germain. I assumed he would be their main striker, but over the course of four years, he's played, what, 30 games? And he's played well in all of them as well. But that is... I mean, great business on our end then. Clearly, he wasn't as good as we were giving him credit for, although his Slovenia record suggests otherwise. A crazy contract for someone not playing that often. Was he injured? I mean, he was never really injured for a significant amount of time, so that is very strange that he hasn't done too much. Um, Kenneth Wynn was apparently... Oh, this must be a feeder club. I've just noticed that we've loaned out four players in one season to the same club, so I can only assume it was a feeder club. Kenneth Wynn is still at Wolfsburg. He is in their second team, Clearly never favoured too much, although after he left, he never got another senior appearance for Wolfsburg, which is heartbreaking because he had so much talent, so much potential. He went on loan to this side in the second division of Austria and still didn't get a game. But then a few years later, he went out on loan to Union Berlin, where he got two appearances. And now he struggles to even make an appearance for the Wolfsburg second team. That is heartbreaking. Who's he wanted by? St. Pauli. Go on, sign him. Give him a chance. I'm sure he'll do a great job in goal but that's that's heartbreaking to see he was never really given the chance there isn't really too much else to note there i don't think so let's move on to the next season to see what we decided to do i'm just looking at the sales first and i've got to say some of this business is absolutely shocking i mean mokoko to psg for only 100 odd million pounds is a rubbish deal the year after selling sesco i hope they replaced him well but they sold him 104 million i feel like we could have got so much more for him he's then moved to chelsea and is now one of the main strikers in world football, but it's these ones I'm really annoyed at that caught my eye already. Luca Nets to Man City for only about £30 million. What a waste. I mean, he was so good for us. I think he could have been one of the world's best left backs if he stayed at the club and played consistently. But Man City is, of course, not a bad team. But the one I'm noticing straight away is Mattia Resler, who was, at the time when we were at the team, one of the best players in the Bundesliga, and he was 18, so it's like he had such a bright future ahead of him. He's been sold to Lazio for 20 odd million pounds and never really been given a chance. I mean, after the season we left, they used him very sparingly, if at all. I mean, he, he could have been so good. He was such a good player. 
that is the biggest waste of talent that we've seen so far. Maxi Arnold did make his move to Freiburg. Is he now retired? He is retiring at the end of a season. What a legend he was for the club. He stayed there for another few years after we left and kept it up. He definitely had his best time at the club during his spell with us as the manager, but it's nice to see that he is still going, still out there, still kicking the football, so fair play. But they did spend a lot of money that season. We brought Nemanja Jovic from Mainz. I don't know who he is, but he's apparently on the wing. Zebalos, um, I imagine these were all a load of regen players because I've never heard of them, but it looks like we've signed some good talent. I mean, Elise I'm aware of. Wagnerman, Teze, Leroy Sane joined the club, Lucas Hernandez. We raided Bayern Munich that summer. Simican also joining. It seems like the club's just losing slowly and slowly the really key stars in world football that we did have. I mean, I don't know enough about these players to completely write them off, but they're no Mokokos, they're no Sescos, they're no Bellinghams. We obviously did the job. I think the owners must be funneling some funds out of the club because they're not spending anything like what they're bringing in. We've obviously sold Sesco, Bellingham, Mokoko over the last few years for £300 million. This summer, we sold Javier Roberti for £93 million. In that last season, we signed him and loaned him out to Tigres where he had a great year and I was expecting him to come back and be a big part of the side. And it looks like he was. And then he's gone to PSG where he is probably one of the best players in world football. 36 appearances for Argentina, 20 goals, some amazing attributes. We had a real star in our hands and we were recruiting so well in our time at Wolfsburg. We would have been a dominant team in the Champions League for another 10 years if I was in charge, almost guaranteed. And then in the most recent season, the transfer business saw a lot of the old heads that we know move on from the club. Victor, a player that we had at left back, never seemed to have reached his potential after signing for us. We still made a lot of money back on him, but he's never really had an amazing season. So her for Berlin is where he's ended up. Roberto Piccoli finally moves on to be the star man at Bayern Munich. I'm hoping he's a star man there anyway. Um, yes, he was. He was their main striker, so that's nice to see. And he's got Italy appearances now. Roberto Piccoli, what a star he was, even if he didn't always get the credit from you guys in the comments. Anyone else that we recognise? Marcel Lutz did leave. He was a player that was sprinkled around the first team. Bloody hell. Never getting a German first appearance, but 45 under 21 caps, 27 under 21 goals. Never really given the opportunity under the other managers, playing for the Wolfsburg two sides, never not scoring goals when he was given the opportunity, but Gladbach have decided to take the punt on him and it's been worthwhile playing 10 times and scoring five goals, Marcel Lutz. Nice to see he got the opportunity, but it seems like all the players that we knew at the club have now moved on, which is what you'd expect in five years. There's a few left, a few of the key men. But the club overall has done well. Eric Ten Hag looks like he's taken him forward into a bright future, just not as bright as it would have been if we were the manager. Nico did win the Bundesliga Player of the Year award I saw earlier, so that must mean that he is, what, one of the best players in the world? He actually was. He won the Ballon d'Or in 2029, so fair play to Nico. I never thought he'd be Ballon d'Or capable, but 29 assists and 17 goals. Hold on. Who is this man? This is not the Nico we know. I don't know where they were playing him. But that is some crazy returns in that season where he won the Ballon d'Or. Fair play to him. Love that for Nico. Um, up there with Mbappe, La Torre Martinez, Goretzka also winning the Ballon d'Or. If we keep going down, is there anything of note? Oh, there we go. Kareem Adeyemi. Bless him. He did win his Ballon d'Or. Playing for Manchester City. Is he still doing it out there now? Yeah, he's been absolutely smashing it. What a signing that was for Manchester City. It was a lot of money, £210 million. But it has bought them goal after goal after goal for Adeyemi. And hopefully... It's brought them some success as well. There you go. Manchester City did win a Premier League title, despite the fact that they finished second for what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven seasons. They did finally get the title win with Adiemi's help. But that, I think, is everything that we need to look at. I'm hoping I haven't missed anything else. But overall, it looks like the club is in great shape. The management has done a great job with them. And I think we'll just head back over to Wolfsburg as I do a little bit of a channel update just in case you guys want to look around and see anything else I didn't point out on this home screen. So naturally with the Wolfsburg series done we need a new series to take over on the channel but what I have been neglecting a little bit is the one-off rebuild videos. We have got one coming out soon and another one planned after that and I'm going to do a few of them in a row before we start a new big series and that's because those videos are so much better in terms of bringing new faces to the channel, getting more total views overall, which isn't really what I'm doing it for. But if we can sprinkle a few of them in and around our main series, it will help the channel grow. That will hopefully help the channel grow quite a lot. So there will be a few one-off rebuilds in a row before we get back into a series, which I imagine 
will be a more short-term series as opposed to a four or five year stay at a club just because of how long there's probably going to be left in the life cycle of football manager and how much interest there's going to be. So I'm going to try and keep it short and sweet so we can keep as many people on board as a series as possible. So if you've got any ideas, any challenges, it could be a one, two season job, let me know in the comments. So hopefully you're all looking forward to that. I know I am. Thank you for all your support on the channel so far and going forward, I'm sure it's just going to get even better. Don't forget to like the video if you did enjoy and say goodbye to the Wolfsburg save. It's the last time you're going to see it. So have a great day everyone and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.